Over time, young people have been political, but they haven't necessarily shown up to the ballot box. Young people don't just vote in the same number as older cohorts do. I'm Sean Higgins. And I'm Sage Miller. Part of that could be young people just don't know where to start, or they don't feel represented in politics. Very few people under, let's say, 35 years old throw their hats in the ring to become the next member of Congress. And as we heard last episode, the way politicians are talking right now just isn't landing. And that's a big deal because one in five Americans are Gen Z. They are a looming force in politics. There are more Gen Zers than baby boomers, y'all. There's also more millennials than Gen Xers. People under 35 literally have the power to change the direction of politics, if enough of them hit the polls. And that's what the Utah Republican Party is worried about. They need to mobilize younger voters to join the party. On this episode of State Street, we dive into why the Utah Republican Party is struggling with that core group. For decades, it's been a given that Utahns would grow up to be loyal Republicans. That's just not the case anymore. For perspective, there's only 56 people that are millennials or younger in all of Congress, out of 535 members. There is only one Gen Zer in Congress. That's Democratic Representative Maxwell Frost of Florida. But he represents a population with a growing political footprint. In Utah, a Zillennial did run for the Republican nomination for Congress this year. His name is Zach Wilson, and he stepped up for the 3rd Congressional District. And just to be clear, this Zach Wilson is not the former BYU and current Denver Broncos quarterback. He works in finance. He was a convention-only candidate. That means he did not gather signatures to get on the primary ballot. And he was just a few votes short of being on that primary ballot. He lost to Republican State Senator Mike Kennedy in the final round of voting. I sat down with Wilson. I wanted to know why he decided to run and why he thought it was important for the party. It was really getting involved with the young Republicans and meeting everyone, going back to D.C. a few times, meeting folks. And then when Senator Romney announced he was step- stepping down, we were actually at an event at Representative John Curtis's house. He had hosted a lot of young people to come have dinner, talk energy, a few different things. And he had said he wasn't going to run, right, for the Senate at that point. And at that night in his basement, when we were all there gathered together, it became very clear that he was going to run. I was like, wait, there could be an empty house seat, and I actually live in that district. That began the ball rolling that night, November 27th, to ultimately file in early January and run. What motivated you to run for this CD3 seat? Yep. Ultimately, when I looked at some of the demographics of Utah, we're the youngest state in the country by average age by far, and Congressional District 3 is the youngest district in the youngest state in the country. It seemed to me like the time was perfect to run. We had a very optimistic campaign and pro kind of American dream and excitement and all this sort of stuff that I think our age group maybe is missing out on at times. There's a sort of cynicism or postmodernism that I hear a lot, even at despair at times, which really gets me down. And so I wanted to be an optimistic, bright voice facing the future, walking forward, not focusing on the past. 29 years old, running for the House, we need more young representation. The Republican Party especially needs younger representation. You look at the House of Representatives right now, and the youngest members predominantly are more left-leaning, democratic socialists, self-proclaimed. And Utah being the youngest state in the country, and then my financial professional experience, you know, my macroeconomics, my knowledge of that sort of stuff really all came together. Were there any issues or specific issues that motivated you to want to throw your hat in the ring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll couch everything I've said so far. It's like, oh, I ran because I'm young. Utah's young. That's not really what it was. I told every every delegate that I could tell, I said, don't vote for me because I'm young. Vote for me because the ideas are good. And if I, the fact that I am young is just very positive for the party. Yeah. And so, my number one issue was debt and deficit. And I've been following that for a long time. This is the number one concern facing America in the next 10 to 20 years. That was a big reason why I ran. So I talked, uh, laid out plans for entitlement spending, a lot of different aspects of spending. And then just 
a simple return to limited government, separation of powers, federalism. That was stuff really that resonated. So while you didn't make it onto the primary ballot at yep. convention, how did you feel walking away from it? <laughs> yeah, there was a moment leading up to the final round, the second to last round of voting when it was Mike Kennedy in first and then me and then J.R. Byrd. And I'm sitting backstage and there's this moment of like waking up. I was like, where am I right now? How, <laughs> how did this happen? And no one expected us, I think, to do that. Well, people that knew our message, like this guy actually could make a run at it. And there were some people postulating that I would have a better than expected performance at convention. But being there and by 14 votes not getting on the ballot was a total crusher and uh, kind of a shocker. I think a surprise and a wake up. I was like, wow, we're here in the final round and it's coming down to this final vote, whether or not I'm on the ballot to run for the U.S. House of Representatives. Like, what do you think that signals about the party that you kind of had a shot? I like that question a lot. I think it shows there's a hunger for something new in the Republican Party. The, the party is getting older. If you had been at convention, they asked for the average age in the room, I think would have shocked people. That's out of step with our young state. Something that the Utah Republican Party chair, Rob Axton, has talked about, as well as like other prominent Republicans in the state, is their issues with resonating with young voters mm -hmm. and trying to get young Republicans involved in the political process. Why do you think the party is struggling to connect with younger Republicans? Look, I, better messaging, better <laughs> advertising, and then having people that truly represent them in in positions where, you know, in the House and the Senate, both nationally and here. And uh, I, I think just not having the representation causes a disconnect. And I think focusing on how the message specifically impacts them. Hmm. Talk about what debt and inflation mean to you as a young person. It's tough because you're facing, if you're the Republican Party, you're facing headwinds, I'd say, from whether it's social media or societal trends. But I think if you can focus on some of the core stuff, how conservative ideals and limited government really can help you in your spot when it comes to buying a house, inflation, stuff that we actually feel pretty heavily. There are ideas there that I think can really deeply resonate, but I think the messaging has to be better or else you're going to lose out on a huge cohort here. Do you think there are things that the Republican Party should veer away from when they're trying to mobilize young voters that may be a turnoff to them? I think there are two responses here. There is a group that is going to be motivated by some of those culture wars, red meat issues. I think that will actually resonate with some young people. But from the delegates that I spoke to that were, let's say, 30 and under, there was a deep understanding of politics beyond the social stuff and how governance at the national level and at the state level actually affects them and their situation. The Republican Party could do a, a good job of addressing energy, climate, some of these things through Republicans' lens. And I actually think that taking more of a libertarian view on some of the social stuff is a key to success with young people. I actually think that's what they prefer. If we cannot better resonate with millennials, Gen Z, and then Gen Alpha, which is 14-year-olds currently who will be able to vote in the 2028 election, 10 years from now, we're Colorado, in my opinion. When you, when you say Colorado, do you think it might turn more purple or do you think it's going blue? Yeah, you look at Colorado, which used to be a red state, and then as Denver grew, the state swung more purple and now more solidly blue. And so I look at that here in Utah and a lot of the similar, I see very similar demographic Utah solidly red state, but as Salt Lake grows, tech jobs grow, the outdoor kind of wonderland that we have here in state and more outdoorsy minded people come here. I think you, you could easily become more progressive, but if we can't better resonate as a Republican party with, with younger voters, optimistically on their turf, maybe talking more about the, the grand scheme, maybe, maybe veering away with some of them at least on social issues and talking more about governance. And I think that's how you win young people over to the party and keep the state conservative and limited government and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Are you optimistic the Utah GOP can accomplish that? I think the current leadership has an openness and an understanding of demographics in a way that I think is spot on. I think the understanding is there, and now we just need to execute it together. That was Zach Wilson, a former Republican candidate for Utah's 3rd Congressional District.
We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk with another young Republican about what he's hearing from his party and whether it lines up with the things keeping him awake at night. You're listening to State Street. Support for State Street comes from the Hinkley Report on PBS Utah. I'm Jason Perry, director of the Hinkley Institute of Politics. The Hinkley Report is Utah's weekly political roundup, bringing together Utah's top journalists, political thinkers, and lawmakers to help you understand how politics impacts your life. Listen to the Hinkley Report wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to State Street. I'm Sean Higgins. And I'm Sage Miller. So a GOP zillennial candidate lost. But it did give Zach Wilson hope that even older voters see the potential in people like him as an important asset to the party. But there's still another problem. The lack of Gen Zers and younger millennials wanting to be involved in politics. Some of that hesitation is because they don't know where to start. It can be a daunting process. Another issue is that the party platform just doesn't resonate with them. To further understand the mind of a young Republican voter, I sat down with Spencer Roberts. He's 30, a dad, and a PhD engineering student at the University of Utah. I first met Spencer in February for a GOP voter panel I hosted with PBS Utah ahead of Super Tuesday. We'll add a link to that in the show notes if you want to watch it. This time, he told me he feels like it's his duty to be well-informed. Going to the convention was an interesting experience for me, um, in part because I realized that you really won't make any headway unless you get people involved. I think I don't feel necessarily as kind of hopeless that there's there's nothing we can do. I think I feel a little bit more frustrated that people don't care as much. It's almost, I feel like my, my uh, kind of concern has shifted a little bit more away from the politicians and more towards the voters Um, because I I tried my best to get people involved and uh, you know it was it was sparing right the the interest and so I don't know if that's just because people view politics as a contentious subject and you know in the name of you know peacemaking they try to avoid it or they just don't like confrontation Um, but it was hard to get people involved why do you think more young people need to be involved in politics? Well, I would say for one, you need to be ready to take the reins as your demographic or our demographic becomes one of the larger voting demographics um, as the baby boomers pass away or you know become unable to unable to vote. You've got to be educated. An uneducated populace is is really bad. You know, so uneducated voters or people that just aren't involved are far more susceptible to the the tabloid type of communication, right? Um, I was extremely involved, and it was difficult for me. And I don't want my generation to be one that is easily manipulated. Uh, That's not the way that I want to see it pan out. It doesn't sound like a recipe for success. With that said, what issues do you care the most about this election season in particular? The economy. I feel like immigration has impacts on that. And immigration feels a little bit like a time bomb that it's going to have to be resolved at some point And it's probably not going to be resolved very well. The economy. You know, I got a family of two kids. That's bill comes due every month. You know, it's it's important. The economy sort of feels less like a soft landing and more like a slow death. And then I care about the foreign policy front a lot. I don't think Joe Biden's done a very good job at that at all. That's an understatement. Let's hear some state issues. State issues. I care about water management a lot. And you can't hamstring either the urbanites or the, the rural environments, the agriculture. There's got to be some kind of way to balance that. I care about housing, housing costs here. The population of Utah is not going to go down. It's building itself up as a place that has opportunity and jobs. And I think that that means that, you know, as a as a engineering PhD, like I'm probably going to spend more of my life here than I thought. So, you know, you're going to get an influx of white collar jobs, good paying jobs into this area. You've got to be able to house those people. And 
right now there's a big mismatch between wages and housing. There needs to be some motion to remove regulations, you know, incentivize building, make it easier for building new stuff. That's really important. It's really important for the future of Utah. What about your peers? What are they saying about politics right now? And are those issues kind of lining up with other people you talk about who are your age, kind of in your spot in life? Or are there, are there disconnects? I would say more disconnects because most of the people I talk to don't talk about it, right? Now, what they do, what I have noticed is that they it's almost like politics exists in the realm of pop culture for them. So when there's something that's splashy, something that's like <gasps> makes you gasp, right, that, that that's what they pay attention to. Now, that's not everybody. I got, I got, you know, I got a few people involved that they wanted to be more involved, but they weren't sure how. Do you think there's anything that the Utah GOP could be doing to encourage more people like yourself, more young people to get them more involved? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, is, is they need to make politics accessible and then they probably need to spend a lot more on just marketing, okay? marketing on the platforms that people are using. And, and in a way that's not leaning towards a certain position, I would say, you know, obviously they're the GOP, they have their platform, but you could, you know, they, they could do something like just off the top of my head, have ads for a quiz where you take to see what, what percentage you agree on the GOP platform, right? Have, a uh, on the website, the accessibility there, uh, to kind of put in your precinct, show how you can get involved, what things happen when, have more active, you know, Twitter accounts, things like that. I went to my caucus, which includes essentially all of the the family and graduate student housing at the U. There were seven people there. I'm pretty sure an older couple attended the wrong precinct. So there's like five people there. So I, you know, I don't know what else to do besides maybe, you know, next caucuses, I go around to my neighborhood and knock on all the doors and say, I don't care what your politics are. I just want you involved. I think a lot of people, particularly young people, look at politics and they just go, I don't know enough to, to participate and, and mm -hmm. be a, a, a positive voice to add to the conversation. What do you say to someone who has got a lot going on in their life? Yeah. And is trying to make time, but they're like, you know what? I simply just don't think I have enough to say to be a, a positive part of this conversation. What would you say to someone like that? I would say start small. So the the first thing you should do is sit down with yourself and figure out what your principles are, the things that you care about, and try to make them as, you know, you, everybody has a set of moral guidelines that they follow in some fashion, you know? Write those down, actually articulate them to yourself and then take it one at a time. I think that the bombardment of um, politics can be sort of oppressive or overwhelming. Um, but if you already have your principles laid out, I think that that makes it a lot clearer. I think that what people get confused about is that they are, they're trying to navigate open waters and they don't have any landmarks. I mean, you don't have any landmarks and your, your, your objective is to, to get involved in navigation, you're, you're going to get lost. Figure out what you believe and then just start applying that to things one by one. Being willing to articulate your ideas and discuss them is probably the most important thing that you could do. You want to get involved in politics in some level, start writing out your ideas Start trying to find people to actually discuss them with and avoid the echo chamber like death. Avoid it. I'm a conservative. I read the Washington Post and the New York Times. And, you know, I, I, I follow David Hogg on Twitter because these people op usually oppose what I think. And so I have to read what they say and I have to try to find out, do I agree with them? How would I refute their argument? You have to take some kind of systematic approach. Avoid the echo chamber, but you, you can't jump into that pool if you don't know where you stand. That was Spencer Roberts, a GOP delegate and millennial. younger generations have the potential to make or break elections. There's a lot of millennials and Gen Zers out there. 
and some Republicans are already beginning to recognize the changes happening in Utah. Even though Zach Wilson didn't make it onto the primary ballot, voters and delegates seemed enthused to have a young rookie in the ring. After all, he only missed qualifying for the primary by a handful of votes at convention. This begs the question, what does the Utah GOP say about all of this? I spoke with state party chair Rob Axon about what we heard from those younger conservatives. He's also a millennial, and it turns out he also thinks the heat of the national political conversation creeping into Utah is not good for the long term. He blames things like the culture and echo chambers of social media and mainstream media for a lot of the disconnect between young people and politics. But when it comes to the GOP backing away from culture war issues, he says it's a little more complicated than that. I don't think we should cower away from any issue. Every issue that impacts public policy impacts our lives and vice versa. Every issue that affects all of our lives affects public policy. And so if we just made it a a matter of course that as citizens, we don't engage on issues or because they're confrontational or controversial, it's doing a disservice to the best outcomes of the best policy. And so I think it's important for us not to put things in boxes where we lock them away and don't look at them because then there's just this festering disconnection uh, and animosity and anger. If rage is the motivation that you're speaking from, and the the emotion from which you are fighting for your worldview or your perspective, I would encourage you to take a pause and maybe approach it a different way. I don't think that rage is ever productive in the long term. You may have immediate short term benefits, but long term, you're going to miss out on the best uh, policy outcomes. You're certainly going to miss out on uh, a far um, greater opportunities of collaboration and good policy. Uh, so, yeah, rage is not something that I, I believe in, uh, but it doesn't mean that we can't be um, tenacious and focused on the principles that we believe. I don't think we should ever water down what our beliefs are, but I think you can do it without rage. Do you think there is a disconnect in, in priorities between older Republicans and younger Republicans? Um, I don't think there's necessarily a disconnect. There is certainly a difference in the experiences that people have had. Uh, and and the realization of of what opportunities exist. But I think that's the function where sometimes there appears to be a disconnect between somebody who is older and involved in the process and has been for many years and young people who right now are still in that season that they think, oh, I can do that later. I can be engaged later. So I, it's just consistently we have to make that invitation. Be a part of the process now be engaged now, run to be a delegate now. I was thrilled to see all of the the many young people that we had. Sure, there were more people that were later in years than brand new fresh voters, but I met a couple of dozen folks who literally, they are 18 this year. So it was fantastic meeting some of these young people and hearing their ideas and also what their concerns are. With that said, does the Utah GOP have a plan or, or a plan in place to engage more young voters? Not just this election season, but elections going forward. Yep, absolutely. It's a big priority for us is focusing on engaging with young people, make sure that their voice is being heard, that they're invited to that seat at the table. Oftentimes, people don't know what they don't know, and they don't know the opportunities that exist before them. So I think a key thing as we mature in life, and sometimes that maturity doesn't mean you have any better ideas, you just maybe have better uh, experiences where you know how to have done something. I think it's important to be mentors. So for example, when there's events, when there's policies that are being discussed, when there's opportunities for candidacy, I believe it is incumbent on all of us and especially here in the Republican Party, to make sure that we're extending invitations to young people, make sure that they realize that they too can be a candidate, that they can be involved in the caucus process by running and being a delegate. I think the more young people we bring in, not only do we then get their good ideas, but also you get their energy, you get their momentum and and, and their motivation because who's going to be affected by bad policy and good policy? It's gonna be young people for longer. Rob Axon, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Sean. It's very good chatting with you. That was Utah GOP Chair Rob Axon. So, will young conservative Utahns have their voices heard on June 25th? We'll be back next week with a recap and analysis of the results.
You know the drill. If you want to read more about the candidates in the June 25th primary, head to KUER.org. There are great voter guides on all the big races. We'll also link those in the show notes. That does it for this episode of State Street. I'm Sage Miller. And I'm Sean Higgins. The show is not possible without our team. On the digital side, that's Jim Hill, Raquel Davis, and Eleanor Gomberg. Editing and production wizardry is courtesy of David Childs and KUER News Director Elaine Clark. And Caroline Ballard is our executive producer. Catch you next week. One thing I also noticed over the last couple of episodes, when I breathe in, my nose whistles. Is that something that grates on anyone else? I, I haven't noticed it at all. <laughs> <laughs> From KUER.